Dig the shirt. Cthulhu. Very good if you want to work with the ancient ones. Um, so for this video, what I kind of thought I'd get into, because I've gotten a lot of you know emails about how the gatewalking affects different people and what it's going to be like, things like that. And with recent delvings into astrology, um, I'm actually taking a class right now. Um, a lot of parallels have come up for me. So let's think about this. All right. So when you go through the gatewalking, you're attuning yourself to the seven planets that were that we call planets that were known to the Babylonians, as well as the sun and the moon. Um, or, you know, the seven luminaries. Uh, anyway, <laughs> such a great idea, a little frazzled. But so when you are walking the gates from the moon to Venus, to Mercury, to the Sun, to Mars, to Jupiter, and then to Saturn, you're, you are attuning yourself to each of those luminaries' energies. And now, how, does, how, does, how do those energies affect the individual individually? Um, so what I kind of figured out was take a look at your birth chart to see where those planets are in your chart and like what area of life the planets were when you were born because that's a snapshot of the energy that you were born under and so what I kind of thought I would do is be very organic about this and I would talk about my chart and see if that relates to my experiences with the gatewalking so let's um let's see how this works so the first gate Nana the moon well, where's my moon in my chart? I have it up here on a Word doc. Um, let's see, we got the moon in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, moon in tenth house in Capricorn. So then, you know, this is an example of research that you guys can do. Moon ten, in tenth house. Capricorn, even though I spelled it wrong, but I'm actually Googling it right now. It looks like something I've already looked at. 10th house. So 10th house has to do with career. Take, I take career very seriously and work harder than most to achieve what I want, what I'm set out, what I set out to do. Slow and steady and a cautious approach and come across and come across things practically. Now, in relation to the moon, which has a lot more to do with emotion, I can kind of think back about how I started to become more in touch with my emotions to realize how different um, co-workers and people that I worked with affected me. I started to really open up emotionally and becoming more aware of how I felt in the work environment rather than just, oh, this happened, I fixed it, this happened, I fixed it. You know, I kind of felt good about some stuff, I kind of felt bad about some stuff, and of course I didn't want to feel bad, so that made me work harder. See how the gates kind of advance you? Um, so let's go to, all right, second gate, which would be Ishtar, or Venus. So let's look at where my Venus is. Hmm, let's see, it's in the green, and it's in the 12th house, in Pisces, right? So then let's see. Venus, 12th house, Pisces. Let's see if I get a good accurate one here. Cleaning out my 12th house closet. Huh. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Let's see. I mean, I see one where it says 12th house Venus in a woman's chart and clearly I'm not, um, can be a magnet for cheaters. I'm wondering how that works with the... Oh, here we go. Wait for the internet to load. Thank God it's not dial-up, right? Hmm. Let's see. You know, um, I see something about, you know, put it, putting others first a little bit too much and um, a need for like external validation rather than internal validation. And I can honestly tell you that that's something I've kind of been wrestling with. It's a little bit of a self-confidence issue for as long as I can remember. 
And like I said, when it comes to thinking about back about these things, because I do keep journals and stuff like that, I can remember really starting to come out of my shell and be a little bit more talkative with people about what my needs were rather than um, just, you know, kind of going with what was going on rather than being an active participant. And um, even to this day, and I've been done with the gatewalking for, I believe, a year and a half now or so. Um, and I can tell you that's still something I'm working on, but I've become so much more confident with that. So I'm trying to think of how many more of these you guys would think that I should go through. I could go through all of them, but at least let's go to the sun. How about that? So let's see, where's my Mercury at? Where does Nabo rest in my birth chart? Well, Mercury, these little signs, it's in 12th. It's in 12th house in Taurus. Okay. Let's see. Mercury, 12th house, Taurus. Um, let's see. Mercury in the 12th house just by itself. Has a ton of... I'm on Tumblr. Back up. <clears throat> well... Let's see. I see one thing about tending to keep the thought, thoughts and opinions to myself. Yep, it's always been it's always been a thing. And I've I through the gate walking and particularly when I was working with the Nabo energies, I really did start to come out of my shell. I mean, essentially, the way that I've been thinking about it is that the gate walking in a way kind of really breaks down the little tidbits of your negative behaviors that are on top to really get to that core issue. And I think that I kind of found through my gatewalking experience that speaking up for myself was one of my major issues. And because you can kind of see how all of these interrelate. Let me see if I can go back to, let, let's see. Twelfth house rules, endings, hidden things, confined places, and your past life. So also rules death. Hmm. Let's see. Twelfth house in... Taurus. Was it? No, 12th house in Aries. Well, when I feel comfortable, I can take charge of a situation or problem. Be an energetic person. Um, I'm, I can be surprisingly assertive and subconsciously sure of myself, which is probably why I'm very stubborn when I make decisions. But I can definitely, t you know, I can definitely think of the fact that, yeah, I can handle something when I feel comfortable with it. And just going with something without knowing all the details has been difficult for me for a good portion of my life. And since the gatewalking, like I keep referencing, <clears throat> this is something that's really been different. I've been known to go out on a whim more or randomly come up with something or not always worry about the what ifs. So, um, yeah, I said I was going to do one more. Um, let's see. Where is the sun? Mm -hmm. Red circle, which is 29 degrees. Aries in the 12th house. Well, let's see. Sun. Aries, 12th house. And, you know, you guys can do this too if you're thinking about gatewalking or even if you're in the middle of it, right? Hmm. Sun is in the twelfth house. Hmm. Wow. Sun in the twelfth house. Then experience of this website that I'm reading. That early life of such a person, which in this case is me, is encompassed by trouble of one kind or another. Interesting how how many parallels that astrology brings because. I had 16 surgeries because I had hydrocephalus caused by a cyst in my head. And even my chart points out that that kind of thing can occur. It's amazing how many um, synchronicities you can find between real life and the and your birth chart. But let's get back to focus here. Um, hmm. Huh. Limitation in, in the sun's respect, so a limitation in cleansing bad energies. Um, let's see. I 
And wouldn't that be something that you would want to amplify and fix if that was your problem in gatewalking? Well, I can definitely relate to that because I have have had a lot of negative people and negative experiences in my life that I have had to clear out. And I think that this particular time in the gatewalking was when I really had to figure out who my real friends were and figure out exactly, you know, how to, what is it, like, you know, trim, trim things, cut things down, you know, bring them back, back under control and really get rid of any negativity around me. I mean, I even started, or I even, I started watching more inspirational videos on YouTube rather than just, you know, funny things or even strange things or mystery or horror things. Um, you know, just really bringing more positivity into my life. I mean, look at the three vision boards behind me. Um, I made one, my fiance made the other one, and then we worked on the one I think in the middle together, or maybe the one in the middle is mine. Um, but just bring more positivity in. Of course, that's what the sun's suppo supposed to be doing for you. Um, let me see if I can find any more little tidbits. Hmm. Let's see. We only had like one line there, but I want to give you guys a little bit more. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> um, references to different behavioral problems from parents, which, yep, true. Some things that I had to wrestle with and my parents also wrestled with, true. Um, hmm. Twelfth house sons are shy and tend to work behind the scenes. Yeah, I'm not, I never really considered myself somebody that could get up in front of a group of people and, um, you know, like give speeches and stuff, but I've led like three or four workshops now. I'm a teacher and I get up in front of kids every day and I can tell you that my ability to do all of those things did get better over the course of the gatewalking. So those are a couple of, exa of examples of how you can look at your birth chart and in reference to the planets in the gatewalking and how you can see how the um, different energies from whatever, you know, whatever your planet and house, whatever that first planet, what house it's in, and what those influences are, second planet, what's ha what house it's in, et cetera, et cetera. So you can kind of get an idea of the different things that you're going to have to work on. So I hope this helps. I hope this was a good idea for a video. And I hope it helps us tumble deeper down the rabbit hole to figuring out more and more um, information on the Necro. So good hunting, everybody. And um, let me know what you think.